Are you looking for a way to document your ancestors with African American heritage? Well, today my special guest from Wikitree is going to talk to us about the Black Heritage Project that's over on Wikitree. Now, this is an excellent way to document the lives of the enslaved ancestors that we find in our tree or that our slave owning ancestors owned to help document the family tree of those alive today. Now be advised this interview is going to be a little bit longer than normal. We're going to talk about what a project is on Wikitree, introduce you to the Black Heritage Project, and then walk you through step by step how to create a profile for your African American ancestors on Wikitree. And be sure to stay tuned to the end because I have a challenge for you. <laughs> well, today we have a special guest, Emma Macbeth, and she is from Wikitree and she's going to tell us about projects and then stick around because she's going to show us how we can contribute to the U.S. Black History Project. So Emma, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you. Awesome. Now, Wikitree is a fabulous collaboration platform, but you guys are unique because you have these specific projects. Can you tell me about what a project is and then take us in to the ones for, that you are very active with? So projects were first formed because, as you mentioned, uh, Wikitree is a collaborative website. We are what's called a one world tree. So we have one profile for every ancestor that exists and we all share that ancestor. We all work on that ancestor. So as you can imagine, uh, when you have lots of people working on the same profiles, there needs to be a little bit of oversight and mm -hmm. especially with the high profile uh, ancestors. So projects were first created to help create standards to work on these kinds of profiles. And also they're a great way for people who have shared interests to work together, to create standards, to do the work. Um, we have dozens and dozens of projects based on locations, based on interest, um, such as the US Black Heritage Project we're gonna talk about today. That's a shared interest and lots of people all over Wikitree come together and um, work on U.S. Black Heritage. And I'll be showing you in a little bit how to find all the projects because right. um, there's just one list you can uh, look at and it will show you how to join the different projects. Perfect. Why don't we go ahead and show that first? The, okay. Where the projects are and what types of projects there are. And then we'll switch into talking about the specific one that we told everybody to stick around for. Okay. And if you come up here to the menu when you're on Wikitree, Right here, there's a find tab and you click on projects. I'm gonna open that in a new tab. So this is the list of all the projects um, on the project um, index page of any project that you can join on Wikitree. And you can see we start with geographical projects for different countries and areas. Then we have topical projects like uh, Black Heritage, which we're gonna talk about today. And we also have some functional projects. And if you click on each one of these, it will show you um, the requirements for joining because there are slightly different requirements for each project. And then they'll tell you uh, where to go to join. Perfect. And projects are available for any member of Wikitree. To absolutely. Any, yes, absolutely. Any member of Wikitree who has um, signed up on Wikitree is a member uh, can join any of these projects. Perfect. So tell me a little bit of the background behind the um, Black History Project for the United States, and then you can show us how to actually get involved. So the Black Heritage Project was started a few years ago with the hope of documenting um, the families with Black Heritage, as well as helping people connect to their enslaved ancestors. We were originally uh, had a different name. We revamped the entire project in June of 2020, and we decided we wanted to be the place where we did everything that was U.S. Black Heritage. Um, as you probably know, there are websites all over the place that do different pieces of Black Heritage. They might do um, ship manifests. They might work on plantations. They might work on just certain families there's not really one place where it's all done and all connected. And Wikitree is the perfect place for that because as a one world tree, 
let's say Sally, um, John Smith and Sally Tate are working on the same ancestor over at Ancestry. They don't know they're working on the same ancestor and they have different records. They can't share with each other these different records, which might help them continue to build the tree for their shared ancestors. So at Wikitree, we have one profile for their shared ancestor. Let's call her Muriel. Mm -hmm. And one person creates the profile and another person comes and brings in more documents for that same profile. And we've now expanded right. this family. So that's the goal of US Black Heritage is to process every document we can find as you if you've ever done work with um enslaved ancestors these documents sometimes are in back rooms in you know they're they're not online they're not indexed and True. so we're processing them we're indexing them and we're getting them on these single profiles so that other people can come along add additional records and then we can get people connected to their um ancestors and what I really like about that is that let's say I pass away and I had created some profiles on um, a private tree or, you know, a public, but only I can work with tree on different platforms, you know, then that information is kind of stuck. And I like that the wiki tree platform, very similar to the family search platform, it, it's there and it can look outlive you. And so your contribution can li live longer than, you know, your life. And you don't have to try to figure out who needs to inherit that profile. It's, it's right there on Wikitree. And so that to me, as somebody who tries to do preservation oriented things, yes. and my parents are both deceased. And so I, I just, mortality stares me in the face all the time. And I really like that the inheritance isn't an issue. It's right there to live on after me. So I'm really excited to see some of this Black History Project stuff that you got going on. So let's go back to your screen if you're ready, or did you have anything else I neglected? Um, I was just going to say, and the other great thing is this is publicly available. So it's available to everyone. Anybody right. who's just interested in maybe looking at their family history and you know, getting a tree started, you know, we're building things that are available to them, freely available to them, free. Um, That's yeah. another bonus. This is our project homepage and it just welcomes everyone to the project, tells a little bit about some of the big things we have going on and we have tabs um, to bring you to the resources we have available. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Heritage Exchange Portal because this is a huge part of the work that we do um, Doc, processing the documents for enslaved ancestors. And this page will also tell you um, how to join if you'd like to uh, help us with our shared goals. So how many people are part of this project right now? Uh, we have currently about 80 badged project members. Anyone who's a member of a project gets a badge saying that they are a member of that project. However, we have hundreds and hundreds of people all over Wikitree who are helping with our shared goals. And we have a public forum called G2G. G2G is a very, very large part of Wikitree because this is where um, members of Wikitree come together and help each other work on whatever they're working on. Mm -hmm. um, you can go there and ask for help. You can get information. So right here, it's under the help tab. It says forum G2G. So this is the G2G forum uh, where you can find information on different topics. You can search right here by topic um, or you can ask a question on anything you need help on or you are interested or have questions. Uh, if you're interested in Black Heritage, you can put in Black Heritage um, in the uh, search bar there and click that and all the topics for Black Heritage will come up. That's the tag we use is uh, Black Heritage. That's awesome. Let's pretend that I have a document. I found a probate record or I found a land transaction and I want to contribute to sharing this information with others. What do I do? Okay. So if, there are two options. Okay. If you want to process, if you are a, pro, a member of Wikitree and you want to process that information yourself, I'm going to show you in just a minute how to do that. Okay. If, however, um, you would like us to do that for you. I'm going to bring back the project page, which I lost. At the very bottom of our project page, 
you scroll all the way down, it says contact us. And we have an email address here where you can send us the document. Let's say you're working on your family and you come across some slavery information just randomly. You can send that to us and we will be happy to process that for you. That's nice. Because um, our goal is to process every document that we can possibly get our hands on that exists. The more we document, process, the more documents we process. The right. more ancestors we're going to be able to connect to descendants. True. So that's the way if we have it it's, and we would like um, wiki treeers to come in and process it for us. But yes. if we want to just contribute to the project, then what do we do? So we have what's called a heritage exchange portal that's going to give you more details on everything I'm about to tell you. And it's this tab right here on our homepage. If you click on that, it has questions that will lead you to the information. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through quickly how to do basic processing of information. Perfect. I'm going to work with Richard Herring. This is um, someone who owns slaves in North Carolina. Okay. And we already know that he had a will that lists several um, people who were enslaved. So um, you don't have to start with the slave owning um, profile but we happen to have one that's already available. You can start with just the document. Um, so let's say you come across the will and you see some enslaved people in that will. Right here, you can see we have a list of people who do not yet have profiles created. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna document every person who was um, ever enslaved who we have a name for. So how do you know that they don't have a profile yet? What would be different? Um, the only well i know it's we don't have a profile because there's no link here gotcha okay so it'd be, people name. would come in and hyperlink to that profile yes yeah gotcha I okay you how to do that as we go now okay. let's say you you think oh my goodness here's ben who's listed in this will how do i know if he has a profile already well you have to start at the slave owner that's the only way really to know because ben doesn't have a last name yet okay and um there are two, there's one thing that people have to have before we can create a profile for them, and that's a first name. Okay. Such as, so what I mean by that is if you've ever looked at slave schedules, all they have is an age and, a, you know, a tick mark. Mm -hmm. we, we can't create profiles from that. We need at least a first name okay. to do the process that I'm going to show you. Okay, great. Okay. And so, um, the more information we have, the better if it's like... Um, Julia, the caramel colored girl, that would be a good as well? Well, what would be even better is Julia, who was 12, or Julia, right. who was the daughter of. We'd love okay. to have more information, uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes all we get is a name listed. Okay. Awesome. And that's okay, right. because this, this is our starting place. We have to have somewhere to start so that okay. we have a place to bring more documentation in as it comes. Awesome. Okay. Let's go back and see what we do next. All right. So I'm going to create um, up here in the help menu again, we have this add tab and it mm -hmm. says new person. So I'm going to right click on this that I bring up a new tab and I'm going to create Ben's profile. Now we use a special naming system in U.S. Black Heritage because as I said, these people don't have last names, but we we at Wikitree, we have to have some last name. Okay. And we've determined that using the, the, the standard of unknown isn't helpful to us because descendants may have some information to look for their ancestor, and that might be the name of the slave owner. Okay. So that's the name we're going to use for Ben as a placeholder name. We recognize this is not his final last name necessarily, okay. but it's going to be a placeholder. Okay. So when so I click, when you click on that tab, it opens or, or that link, it opens a new window yeah. or tab on your device. Okay. Yes. And this is the form for filling out a new person. And so I'm going to put in Ben and last name is Harry. Now we have a problem. We don't know his birth date. So what we use is the date of the document. Oh, okay. Which, which is the will. And we say uh, before. So I'm going to go down to the will here, which is five. Third uh, of March, 1802 was when his will was created. And we're going to say before. 
We okay. know he had to have been before born before that. We don't know 100% when he was born, where he was born, but we're going to estimate North Carolina. We can okay. mark that as uncertain. And then the one thing I forgot to do. So I click on the edit tab for Richard Herring because I need the source in order to add for Ben's profile, and that would be the will. So I found the source here listed on Richard Herring's profile, and I click copy. And I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to paste it into Ben's profile. I'm going to click add new person. So you needed at least a first name. At least a first you name. You did a guesstimate of the birth as before when that will happen. Yes. And then you needed to have the source in order to create this profile. Yes. Is that correct? Those are the only things that we need. And then I'm going to do a couple of things on Ben's profile because... I've created this profile, but I need to tag it so that you as Black Heritage know this knows this profile exists. Okay. So there's two things I'm going to do. One is I'm going to add what we call the African, oops, my um, text expander did it for me. <laughs> I, I put this sticker on so many profiles. Zoom in on this. You can see it even better. Um, this is the African American sticker. The code has to be exactly like this. And what this will do, I'm going to come down and, and click preview so you can see it. It will add this sticker right here, which says it will, once I say, save it, it will say Ben Herring is part of Use Black Heritage. Okay. And right. what this does is it helps tag it for the U.S. Black Heritage Project to know that this um, exists. And it will also help honor Ben's hair, uh, Black Heritage. Okay, so the second thing that we need to add is a category to this profile, and categories on Wikitree are very much like tags. And this category will tell U.S. Black Heritage Project that a new profile has been created for the slavery database and that we need to come um, along and add some additional tags to it. So we have something called a category picker uh, for our profiles at Wikitree. It's right here next to the C button that it's this stair button, looks like stairs. And if you click this button, oops, I unclicked it. Now I click <laughs> it again. And this window will pop up right here. And you just start typing what it is you're looking for, and it will bring the category up. So I want to type in USBH Heritage Exchange. That's the, the program for US Black Heritage. It's called Heritage Exchange, mm -hmm. uh, where we are documenting the slavery. And I just click on that first thing and it will automatically format the category for you. Perfect. You <laughs> no coding remember, needed. You don't have to remember anything except heritage. I can't even say that. Heritage exchange. Okay. Um, when you put in US because it's in the US and BH for black heritage, uh -huh. and then you're just looking for that first one because the rest of them seem right. to be related to people who are more involved in the project. But a, a newbie like myself, that's, right. that's right. where I and need that's, that. that's the goal. We want this to be as simple for new people as possible. So we've created this general category. And you're mm -hmm. right. If I type in USBH, uh, heritage, you'll see there are additional tags that we use, but that's for people like me who know, will come in when I see this category, I will come mm -hmm. to Ben's profile and I'll add those additional tags later. For Perfect. You. Okay, good. Okay. So now I have to click save because although we now have a um, interim save, which is wonderful, so we don't lose our work, we have to do a final save. Okay. Scroll, 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 but we have to summarize our changes. Uh, we have some things you can choose here. I did all sorts of things. Um, I'm just going to say bio and biography improvement. Okay. I'm going to click full. Make sure you say full save because we don't want to draft. We want to we want to commit to this change. Okay. And I'm going to to bring this down a little bit so mm -hmm. that you can see this is his profile. Now you can add some notes to this, which I should have done. Um, ben was listed in the will for John Herring. We don't know how old he was, so we are using um, the date of the will as his estimated birth date. And those notes would go in the biography section? Right. So okay, if perfect. I click edit again, uh -huh. scroll down, just right here, see where it says Ben was born? Mm -hmm. Before 1802, that's where you can add additional notes. Oh, nice. Okay. 
And the thing I forgot to do is I didn't mark North Carolina as uncertain because okay. I'm not sure if he was born there. I'm just guessing. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to have some sort of estimated location in there. Um, and then in that biography part, we were you saying add the note for why we're assuming that birthday. Mm -hmm. Is that would also be a place where we need to put the um, the surname that we're using? Like explaining that we're using a surname of a herring because yes, we actually okay. we have a template for that, and this is in the instructions. The okay. more complex instructions, um, okay. and it's it, it. You can see I use this template a lot, and uh -huh. when I click preview, you'll see it comes up with a button that says this is a preliminary last name. We're working to find his final last name, but until then, this is the last name he will have. Cool. Now, if I forget to do that part, it um, doesn't matter. Would do I need to put a note to remind you, or do you okay. know, or do you contact the person? What happens if I forget? So, if you forget, that's okay because the only, absolutely only thing you have to make sure you've done on this profile is add this category okay. USPH Heritage Exchange because somebody from the Heritage, <laughs> it's such a tongue twister. Somebody from the Heritage Exchange team will come along and see, oh, there's a new profile created. I'm going to check the source. I'm going to check the location, the date, what last name was used, and okay. we'll add all the tags, all the templates for you okay. and make sure it's set up properly to help us do additional work on it. So this is 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 novice proof. I was going to say something more crass, but this is novice proof. <laughs> yes, this this is the absolute most basic thing uh, way to process uh, this profile. And there, are, once you get used to it, and you want to add some of the additional things, that's mm -hmm. all listed on our Heritage Exchange portal um, in the instructions. So, what else do we need to know? Is that it? That's that's the basics. Um, okay. And I can show you quickly while I have since I've created Ben. Mm -hmm. And up here is his wiki ID, which I'm going to copy, Herring3869. I'm now going to go to Richard's profile oh. and find Ben right here. And I'm going to use the wiki code to link him. And a note of what I just did and click save very important that we link them together yes because if a descendant is looking for their um, ancestor and they know richard herring may have been the owner they're going to go look at richard's profile and if they go down and they look at the list and they see these names and they think okay i had an ancestor named ben they can click on this profile and look for his information nice and is there a link from ben back to mr harrison Yes. I um, think his last name is Harrison. I can't Herring. Herring, sorry. Yes. And we do that as well. Herring. We create on Ben's profile. We also create a um, matching slave owner heading. Okay. And I'm going to put uh, Richard Herring. Perfect. Okay. Like I said, although we're going to do this on all the profiles, that's not the very most basic thing you have to do. Mm -hmm. Just create the profile based on the source and get this heritage exchange category on there and you've got it into the system. Perfect. That. That's so great. Now, what about if I had the image of that document and it's not maybe on ancestry maybe it's just you know i went to an archive and i scanned an image of it what that, do i do there that would be fabulous if it's something where you scanned it yourself so that means um we don't have to worry about copyright infringement you can add it to both uh richard's profile and ben's profile by clicking on this image tab okay and then you click here to upload it and then you just upload it for your from your computer and there's, um, once you upload it to one profile, you'll click edit on the image and you'll be able to add it to each, the same image to each profile by putting in the wiki ID. 
Nice. Okay. That's awesome. And then again, if we get confused, we can just do the super easy way, which we talked at the beginning, which just email you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And that email, you can send us um, images of documents. People do that all the time. Okay. And um, we'll process the document and add it um, to the program. Awesome. Well, I thought this was super, super helpful. If you are um, have any more questions for Emma, be sure to put them in the comments section below and she'll come in and, and answer the questions. And I really feel like this is a follow-up to a video I did a few years ago about what is the responsibility of descendants of uh, slave-owning ancestors. And a lot of people would say, well, nothing. And and I was super excited to hear about this project over a wiki tree. And is it actually, you can do something Something. You can share those documents. And I've been waiting for a few years since I'd created that video for a solution. Like, what can I tell people to do to go and participate? We, this isn't about guilt. This is about building family trees and honoring those people who live. And I'm so grateful that you came and told us what we can do to make a positive impact in the lives of all uh, people who are part of our family tree. So Emma, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? I just bring those documents to us. We're very excited uh, to have all the people who are coming and giving us the information, helping us process it. And I also want to send a note to everyone who are the descendants, come build your tree and eventually we'll help connect you to the ancestors whose profiles we're creating. Now, Wikitree is trying to create one profile for everybody who's lived on the planet. They currently have over 50,000 profiles of Black ancestors in their Black Heritage Project, with over 10,000 of those being enslaved ancestor profiles. Now, here's the challenge. Go out and try to find someone who isn't in the wiki tree already and contribute to the project by documenting their lives. And if you do find a document that has enslaved persons on that, we want you to participate in that. So the goal for wiki tree for 2022 is to reach over 150,000 profiles. This is completely possible when we work together. And if we're lucky, we will also double the number of enslaved persons who are now part of that wiki tree. And we can hopefully help build more family tree links to those persons so they can be remembered. So if you're ready to accept that challenge, go over to wiki tree and join the project. The links for all of that will be in the description box below. If you want to learn more about how to use wiki tree, be sure to check out my video that I made before. And if you're ready for something else, be sure to check out this video right here. All right, you ready? I'm so ready. Start, they're pretty with a smile on and then I'll start. Ready as we can ever be.